Hello and welcome to Stretford Paddock. This is the Devils Podcast. My name's Joe. I'm joined today by the great Jay Motti. How are you? That's a fantastic intro, mate. I love that. The great Jay Motti. Yeah, it's the, about time people The great Jay Motti. The, the force. Skills. The you sheer like force that is Jay Motti. And of course, the Casey as well <laughs> is here today. How are you doing, Casey? Wow. Sound like you're glad to see me, Joe. I'm really glad to see I'm you. I've not just been phoned in. No, you've no. not just been phoned in. You've been here, you've done the news this morning. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, you've done all sorts. Yeah. I'm gonna have a laugh. How is everyone? How are we doing? Yeah, good, good. Good. Ready to talk about football. Do you like football? Yeah, I do like football. You like football, don't you, Jay? Yeah, I There's do. There's one thing I know about you. for a little while. You bloody love football. I, I do. I and, really like and intermittent fasting. <laughs> <laughs> I love football, intermittent fasting, and my children. 40. <laughs> my, chil- my children in that order. It's a close third. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we're gonna be talking a little bit about Pochettino, a bit about Solskjaer, a bit about Pogba. We've got all sorts of controversial talking points today. It's all gone a bit. Everything's a failure, isn't it? Po- Ole's crap, Pogba's crap, Pochettino's hair's all long and everyone likes him. Like, uh, so, right, so let's start with Pochettino. He was on Monday Night Football last night, as we all know. They were just like, hmm, you ready to come back as a manager then? And on that, he said, my energy's full, I'd love to be involved in the game, but at the same time, I need to understand that at the moment it's a good moment and that you need to wait. You need to wait for the right project, and I'm sure going football, uh, sorry, football is going to bring what football wants, and we need to be open and accept that or not which in my eyes means naff all. <laughs> what do you reckon, Jay? Everyone's going, Pochettino wants to be back. Oh, he's coming to United then because all his shit. Uh, I mean, it's been going on for a while and you think there is sort of some reason behind the fact that he's been linked with the United job. Even before Jose, I remember me and Steve doing a bit at Old Trafford uh, when Van Al was manager and there was talk then of Pochettino coming in. Since then, it's just escalated. Now he hasn't got a job and obviously, you know, we expected this when I thought when he goes on Monday Night Football. We were talking about analysis, mm. no matter what he says, people are going to say a that he's amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's brilliant! Did you see the way he analysed that? It's fantastic. Mm. Uh, and b that he's hinted at the United job. Listen, I, I like Ole and I want Ole to succeed. I've said this all the time, all along. But I think it is getting more and more likely that we may see Pochettino in the United dugout. <gasps> I hope I'm wrong. I'm just and that's not what I want. But with our league form, especially. You have to wonder, especially and with the board we've got, mm. how long this can carry on for. I had a rumor that last night you did a you drew a picture of your genitals, went on Twitter, tagged Pochettino, and put, "Hey, dude, analyze this," and then sent the picture. Is that true? It's half true. I delivered him, hand delivered oh, him to you? the studio. No, I love it. And it was <laughs> origami. It was a three. It was a three D piece. But Maurizio, I've got something for you. Yeah. What do you think, Casey? Do you think a that United want Pochettino because it's almost been like. I've compared it a couple of times. Do you remember when Boris Johnson was just an MP and he would go on Have I Got News For You and he did his little flags at the Olympics and everyone was like, this is a silly guy. This is someone who's a bit of a buffoon, who's a bit bumbling, is all this. But like deep down, we're all sort of like, he's going to be prime minister one day, isn't he? And everyone's like, no, he won't. But he actually, there was a sort of inevitability about it. And then eventually he was just prime minister, despite all our best efforts, despite the fact that even people in his own party seemed to think he was a bit of a, a silly idiot. It's almost like the same thing with Pochettino. It's like, no matter what happens, this rumour isn't going away. There almost feels like, at some point, Pochettino is going to be the manager of Man United. Do you think he will? Um, Yeah, firstly, I didn't know where you were going with that whole balls. Do you you know what I mean, though? It's almost like, no matter what we do, this is going to happen. Yeah, it just seems like there's the sort of inevitability about it. Like, it's just that ongoing that it'll get willed into existence because it's just like, oh, Pochettino... Because how United seems to do every bit of business, um, in terms of the owners anyway, is, oh, we can get social media clicks. And obviously, as we, we commented on today, that one of the sponsor even birthday posts now. But, like, if Pochettino's generating this much hype and name around him sort of now, like... It just seems to be that's the sort of name that they'll see in their head constantly. They'll be like, oh, Pochettino's on Twitter and he's mm. trending at third. That's a great managerial appointment. It's like, yeah. why is he trending on third? Because he's not been in a job for a year. I know. And speaking but, about, sorry, speaking about that, he said, after one year, I can say that I was disappointed to be sacked, a little bit upset and not happy. Uh, this was a club that after five and a half years of relationships, uh, it was massive with the staff, the players and the fans. I'm not going to lie. So he's talking, like I said, he's been out of a job for a year. Part of that is because he was being paid by Tottenham and there's that whole kind of like don't get a job stuff that you see. You never quite know the details of gardening, mm. leave and sacked and all that stuff. But he's obviously ready to come back. Everyone's talking about him going to United. But d- I, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like Pochettino signs for 
Was it Zenit St. Petersburg? Zenit St. Petersburg. Someone where you're like, that's oh, the, yeah, the, the, that the Andre Villas Boas way out. Yeah, exactly. Or someone who you just think, oh, Sevilla or Villarreal, like yeah. a, a sort of a, maybe not Sevilla, but like a mid table kind of Spanish league team. I think he's just as suited uh, for that level as he is for United. Like, yeah. what has he done to prove that he is the right manager to take on Manchester United. He's never had a budget to deal with. I know he signed players at Tottenham, but not the way he's going to have to at United. He's never he, he's never won any trophies. He doesn't have experience in that regard. Like other than getting Spurs to a Champions League final, but which he didn't turn up. Where they were yeah. awful. Then he played Kane when he shouldn't have done. Um, what what like. So let's say Ole gets sacked. Why is Poch the number one choice well, here? It, it's weird because if you, from what I've always seen of Poch, he just seems very similar to Solskjaer in the terms of he just seems like this, this nice guy that everyone's friends with and everyone like think, well, you saw, we're going to go on to maybe Roy Keane's comments in a bit where it's like, Roy Keane was like, there's no, no one respects him. No one like, he doesn't have any fight for him. The team's not giving it for him. Like there's, they don't fear him. They don't see him as a managerial figure or they don't respect him enough and like Poch is kind of like that in the sense of he's just a really nice guy and everyone seems to like him and everyone always talks about him like oh he's really chill and everything out and he helps the players and he brings the players forward and he doesn't do the Mourinho thing where he's like ha 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 you're terrible at your job sit on the bench for five weeks like um but he hasn't really done that much but I feel like it's just that sort of thing of oh he was the next big thing in management and he mm. hasn't got a job for a year and you would feel like by not getting a job, he's obviously waiting for one. And mm. what's the job that everyone wants someone to get sacked out of and given uh, given to someone else by the media and some United fans and stuff is Solskjaer. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think, I know, I'm not saying he's a bad manager and he did do good things at Tottenham, but he, he didn't take them from some relegation scrapping team to a, a top a top of the, like, I think, um, oh, I can't remember his name, the Wolves manager. Um, Nuno, yeah, um, Nuno Espirito Nuno, Santo. Yeah. Nuno Espirito Santo. I think he's done more with Wolves than Poch did at Tottenham. And I'm not saying I would want him as United's next manager, but there's a lot of managers. Like, Chris Wilder's done more with Sheffield United than Poch did at Tottenham. Like, I mean, really, though, when you think of take where they were when he arrived and where they were when he left, or where they are after a couple of years, Tottenham are a bit better than they were when he took over. But they also had Dele Alli coming through, Harry Kane coming through. They had Christian Eriksen, I think. Was, did, he, did Poch sign Christian Eriksen? Maybe he did. I don't know if he was the remnants of the bail. Well, he was the bail money. But yeah, I, I, I but was just like, yeah. I, he did, he was good with them and kept them consistent, which is, you know, there aren't many teams in that top four picture where they have stuck around the top four picture without winning any trophies because the rest of them come in and drop out, come in and drop out. We saw Leicester come in and then drop out. We've seen even United and Chelsea, they make a portion then drop out again. Po uh, uh, Pochettino's Tottenham were consistently sort of top four challengers despite not winning any trophies. But, they, you know, they were finishing it in and around the top four before he arrived. They were, but like you've got to look at what you expect and what you want. And like you know, Tottenham finished third in a two-horse race that mm. that season when Leicester won the league. It was there for the taking, and they imploded. They imploded to the point where Arsenal finished above them. And like yeah. for, you know, if you're a Spurs fan, the one thing you you were looking for if you weren't going to win the title was at least we finished above Arsenal. I know they did finish second under Pochettino another time, but you look at it and you think the big test for me, the ones where you think he's going to show that he's not just a good manager but a great one. He's not really done that. Like that time when he, he, he potentially he could have won the league, he yeah. didn't. The other time when you know he gets to the Champions League final, yeah. you think, all right then. Even if it's a close game or you turn up or you give the scousers a bit of a, a test, fair enough. But it doesn't. They just didn't. They was, were awful. They got an early goal and then they, they, they rounded it off when Origi scored a later later on. But in between those two goals, there was nothing. No. Spurs offered absolutely sod all. So you look at it, you think, okay, he's not won any trophies. Yes, he's had Spurs consistently in the top four, but to what end? The yeah. point of getting in the top four is to win the Champions League and when he had the opportunity to do that or look like he could maybe do that, mm. he didn't. Plus, Spurs, when's the last time they won a trophy? Is it 2008? Was it? They haven't won one in, this, like, in the, the 2010s. They yeah. haven't won in that decade. So it's the League Cup yeah. when, 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 yeah. when, when we, the when we won, won. The, the double. Yeah. So, you know, if you're a Spurs fan, again, you want some silverware. Yeah. And again, I go back to the FA Cup semi-final. That team, then, when, when they played us, it was a very good team they had. They, they went ahead. What happens... Mourinho just out, out, out yeah. passed him. We did, and we, you know, we won, and I think we were fairly uh, worthy winners in that game as well. So he's always l came uh, come up a little bit short for me. And I think with Pochettino is, like Casey was saying, he's a likable type of character. He comes across well. I know it sounds daft, but he looks the part. <laughs> he does. Yeah. He looks like a sort of a young, good-looking, well-dressed manager. He's had relative success in terms of keeping his teams competitive, mm. but they haven't 
actually won anything. And I don't see how a manager who more or less bent over for the Spurs board, you know, mm. that's that season where they went to the Champions League final. They got they didn't buy anyone and they also mm. got rid of Dembele in the And also let's look as well. Window. When you when you, I know that oh they had this they had this stadium and all that. Well, twelve months after they opened the stadium, they signed Bale, they signed Bergwijn, they signed um who's the midfielder from France that they got? They got Endombele. Uh, uh, Endombele. Uh, Reguilon as well. They've got Reguilon. They've got they've signed loads of players this year. I like it's not like jo I mean Jose's gone there now, and obviously he's a bit more combative, a bit less pally pally with with Daniel Levy, and he's actually got loads of players to sign for yeah. him. So it's not like I understand that during the build of the stadium they probably had less money, but they only finished that stadium twelve months ago. It's not like they've paid it off. That's they didn't even pay for most of it. I mean, this I'm, is the oh. thing, like when you argue about Ole, right? If you don't want Ole, right? Okay. Uh, even though I don't agree with that, I can understand it. But the, the reasons for getting Poch, like, well, don't Ollie's never won anything. Or, or won it in Norway. Well, Poch hasn't won it anywhere. No. Do you know what I mean? Although Ollie don't stand up to the board. Well, what, Poch didn't stand up to the Spurs board. No. What makes you think he's going to come into a club like Manchester United yeah. and suddenly go toe to toe with the Glazers? It ain't going to happen. No. So the reasons that people say, I want Poch, don't make any sense to me. I like, mean, I, I, I take into account we're, we're doing it in the bubble of the Tottenham sort of question, because obviously Tottenham's the, the team that's most comparable. But obviously, he built up a lot of goodwill at Espanyol. Built up a lot of goodwill at um, Southampton. 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 They, he made that into uh, like a top seven club when he was there. He did well at Southampton. Southampton. I think that's, that's Southampton. Maybe his best for me, he was the first one that really sort of brought a high press into the Premier League. Yeah. He was the one. That he was like, and, or, that. and he was the first one who was saying like, "Oh, a team that's just come up can easily be a, a get high up there mm -hmm. if they just buy the right players and they play the right style of football." And I feel like goodwill's carried. And it's question I'm going to put to you. Where did you he get sacked? Was that at Spaniel? Did he get sacked from that? I, he might have done. I can't remember. I thought he got sacked from um, Spain. Am I getting that wrong? And I'm not it's sure. kind of. I'll put this question to you. But how, how much do you think that the goodwill of Poch has been protected by the Pochettino? Did he get sacked? At the Espanol? sort of image that Spurs are bottle jobs. Because I feel like every time it, um, Spurs have done something wrong, like it's always Tottenham finished uh, third in the second half race. It's like it's not to do with Poch. It's just the players don't have the mentality. Mm. They didn't finish on the Champions League final. It's just because the players don't have the mentality. Tottenham doesn't have that winning mentality. And I feel like that's yeah, but the image. Been, but I mean, obviously, that's the image that's been projected and not so much has been given to the fault of... They mentioned it on Monday Night Football last night, but not much was given to the fault of until that Champions League final, why did he play Kane on for the injured? But I feel like a lot of the times they always went, it's just Tottenham. That's just how it is. Yeah, but it, what, so was it just Leicester as well then? That's how they lost this third. Yeah, they, but they like, came third yeah. in 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 this league to a team that never win the league. No, but what I so mean, it's not well, like they, they've got all this experience. Fair enough, Liverpool have won a few Champions Leagues, even when they've been shit. They've won the Champions Leagues, but they hadn't won one. But for that's what I mean. But I mean, that, I feel like is is the reason that Poch isn't getting or is is high, held in such high regard as he gets projected by the public image of what Tottenham is of just a bottle job team. Well, yeah, I think that's part of it, but. I don't, for me, that doesn't really cut it. Uh, th there's maybe something to say where you go, well, if he could get that team to the Champions League final, what could he do with United? You think, okay, yeah, there's maybe an argument. Um, and having the experience of getting to a Champions League final is good. But, you know, a team like Tottenham, when yeah. they're probably not going to win the league, and when they did have a chance to win the league, they didn't. Like, a team like Tottenham is about winning a trophy. Consistently top four is good in terms of the bank balance, as we've seen at United. Like, we finish top four and not much else occasionally. Do you know what I mean? We, we get to top four and the, and, the, and the owners go, nice one, take your foot off the gas. So for Tottenham, what, what are they trying to achieve there? Are you trying to be a team that, you know, is going to win the league? Are you trying to be a team that wants to win a trophy? Because for me, that team, if you're consistently top four and you're not even the year you sort of challenge for the, for the title, you finish third, what they need to be trying to do is win a trophy, win the Carlin Cup, win the FA Cup, win the Europa League, whatever it may be. But, you know, other than that Champions League final, they've never even really looked like winning a trophy. I mean, in terms and of they that, didn't look like I mean, winning I, that. Obviously, like I'm saying that I, I was proposing that because Poch, I, don't, I think, had that Champions League final, he had probably one of the best teams that I've seen Tottenham have. He's probably better than some... In some it's ways, probably the best team I've ever it's seen probably it's probably better in some ways than the team that Tottenham have now because they had the defence of Vertonghen and Alderweireld, who would consider two of the best centre backs mm. in the league. Obviously, they had Ben Davies and I think it was Kieran Trippier at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he'd moved on. Or was it still? It might be. No, I think it was Trippier. Then. Yeah, um, and then obviously their midfield worked, and then they had Son, Kane, Lucas Moura, Evan mm. Eriksson. Like that team was put together and worked really well. And the fact is, is that they should have done better. Like the comeback against Ajax was out of yeah, nowhere. But there you go again. Like Lucas Moura gets an hat trick. You don't even play him in the final, does he? Mm. Do you know uh, what I mean? It's like 
I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not hating on the guy because no. it's not like he isn't a good manager. I said earlier, he is a good manager. And if he does become United yeah, manager, yeah, will you back like, him? You know, I backed, you back listen, I sat manager. through absolute dross with Louis Van Gaal. Like, no goals at my end of the ground for three months. Well, I still got behind the team. I still mm. backed the manager until he, you know, he's gone. It was only like sort of the very end of, of Moyes where I was just like, this is, just, this is getting untenable. Um, but... Yeah, of course I will. And, you know, he comes in. I hope, I'd love to see him, if he does come in, get back by the board and then say, oh, well, we've got a new manager. Let's throw some money at him. But I just, I think we're kidding ourselves a little bit. When I say we, I mean the fans that think he's going to come in and he's going to challenge the Glazers. He's going to win us trophies. He's going to do all the things that people accuse Ollie of not being able to do. He's going to be great in the big games. Because I don't mm. think Pochettino necessarily has proven himself to be any sort of big game tactician. And as I've, as Cam's pointed out, you know, he left a Spaniel by mutual consent. Whatever that means, probably means, you know, gone. Uh, sorry, Spurs what 14th in the league? I know ironically United are lower than that now, but you know they were struggling mm. and he got sacked for a reason. So we just need to sort of temper our expectations a little bit. If he does come in, I don't see him as the savior. He's not as successful as Mourinho. He's not as mm. successful as Van Hal, and they both failed. So you know we might be kidding ourselves a little bit. Speaking I mean, of successes, United manager, sorry Casey, uh, the first hundred games of Ole's tenure have passed. A hundred games in—that's pretty good. No, I I think. You know, after the end of the, obviously he came in the whole PSG thing, you remember, um, and then obviously the Liverpool game where it started to sort of unravel. By the end of the season, that Everton match was, I think, I still consider that to be the worst performance I've ever seen from a United side. The Everton, ever, Everton away, the four 0 yeah, yeah, for me it is because it, it. Not only were we bad and we got beaten, like the, the City six one, we didn't play anywhere near as bad as we did against. It Everton. was a mad three minutes one. It, it was a mad three minutes yeah, at the end. They'd given. It looked like all that. the players had given up yeah. against them. It, it looked like they didn't like each other. It looked like they didn't like the manager. It looked like he didn't know what he was doing. He couldn't fix things. It really felt completely futile and it was meant to be I think as well after the, the rush and the pinnacle that we'd hit against PSG for it to all just co completely fall out from under you um, I'd never seen anything like it really I don't think but then since then it's kind of been a bit more up and down but at that moment there the, Av the Evan game where I, we, we remember everyone remembers Gary Neville going these players aren't trying these players don't allow it's they the want only to be time, Ollie, Ollie said some like of them won't be in next yeah, season exactly. and that's the first time we'd ever seen him say anything that yeah. was like negative towards his own team so from yeah. that from that point which I think was probably somewhere around his 20th game maybe in, in that ballpark to now his 100th game let's go through a few stats first of all so he's, he's 55 wins 21 draws 24 defeats so 55% win uh, ratio for his first 100 games which is the third best in United history um, behind Ferguson and Mm. Jose is not high. No, uh, Ferguson uh, in the first 100 games, Ferguson's lowest. Ferguson's lower with 48. He's got the highest ever uh, overall with 59, I think. So it's Jose who's above him um, uh, and someone else as well. But he's third in the, on the list, higher than Ferguson after his first 100. Obviously, he's taken over a completely different team. But in comparison, this this whole comparison to Klopp has been a big thing, hasn't it? So Klopp's first 100 games won 50, which is five less than United. Drew 29, which is eight more, and lost 21, which is three less in his first 100 uh, at Anfield. But do you, how much do you read into the whole comparison? Obviously, we went and saw what Klopp did after that. Klopp had a bit more pedigree. He'd won Bundesliga twice. Um, he'd done a few other little bits like that. He'd got uh, Bundesliga, uh, not Bundesliga, Dortmund quite far in, in European competitions as we well. Got to the final, didn't they, against Bayern Munich in the do Champions League? And yeah. also were not great. I know no. they, they didn't get beaten quite as comfortably, but. Or what was the result? That was penalties, wasn't it? That no, one? no, no. It was the, the it was at Wembley one. It was Arnie Robin. I remember scored the winner. But I think they were missing a few players. Yeah. Mm. To be fair. But either way, mm. Klopp had a bit more pedigree than Solskjaer at that time. Do you see this comparison as valid, or do you think it's just a kind of let's pick a manager that notoriously didn't have the greatest start? Uh, it's Ernest Ma uh, Magnol, by the way, who's above Jose and Ole. He was like, was he pre-Busby? Yeah, I yeah, think so. Yeah, something or might have been well before Busby, so forgive me if I'm getting that run wrong. Yeah. I think there is a, some some merit to it because I do see a kind of similarity between Ollie and Klopp in terms of what they came into. Um, mm. You know, I think with Klopp, the Scousers have finished mm. second a couple of seasons, or the, the, not the previous season, season but the season before that yep. so there was a little bit of similarity there that was a great year wasn't it yeah. was it Crystal Palace that game where they were 3 Chris and Ball. 3 Chris Dan Ball one of the greatest Man United Ronaldo. games of all time that I remember watching that like 3 nil up and they were like Partying, it's it so like, good. It's falling apart. It's falling apart. It's falling apart. So it was the Chelsea. It was the Chelsea game, and then it was felt like a couple of like wheat layers. And, and I don't mind seeing that either. I don't mind cheering for someone else losing. No. I don't. I don't like cheering for another a player getting injured. But if it's a, a rival losing, 
Oh, come on. Like, gorgeous. I, I celebrated that Denver bar, like goal like it was yeah. Oli in the new Camp. Yeah. I was absolutely buzzing. And this is when City were going to win the league. That's how bad it was. But anything but the Scousers, I don't care. Um, no, I can see the slight similarities. Obviously, like you mentioned, the biggest difference between Klopp and Oli is the pedigree that Klopp had. He'd mm -hmm. won the Bundesliga back-to-back, -back, broken that sort of stranglehold almost of Bayern Munich, got to a Champions League final, was sort of revered as, as the, you know, the next big thing in management. We wanted him for a time as well. Mm -hmm. um, Edward would think balls that one up. Shock horror. Um, so he has a little bit more in the tank, or sorry, credit in the bank, sorry, than, than Oli does. But in terms of the records, yes, they're similar. In terms of the quality of the squads they inherited are similar. And I think there's a little bit of a lesson to be learned there because people always forget this. And I think a real watershed moment for me with Klopp was the nil-nil against us um, at Anfield. You know, when obviously we drew nil-nil, but mm. Lukaku missed that half chance. David De Gea did a, well, not half chance, it was a very good chance he missed. David De Gea did that save with his legs. Mm. Klopp was on the run of, I think, eight games without a win. Now that was like, people, the scouts will always deny this, mm. but there was a lot of scouts who were saying, is he, this working? Yeah, and because don't forget, he left Dortmund when they were seventh. Yeah, he, he, he didn't. Struggled. He didn't like leave in, in a blaze of glory. No, in Dortmund. They they'd been doing bottom half. Like carry him all, out all with season, a trophy in hand yeah. all season, and then they just about got to seventh. So he came under a, a slight cloud. If we were going to be sort of harsh, then he'd have all these like these, this this spell where they, I think they got to the League Cup final, lost, got to the Europa League final, lost. There was like the thing against West Bromwich Albion where he had them all celebrating a draw in front of the cop. Cop mm. and people going, is this guy really always cracked up to be? Had this awful run, got the nil-nil against United, which I think was more of a positive for them than us. It they looked, the I think they were a bit better than yeah, us as well. We were game. like four 0 FC at the time, and then they kicked on from that. Obviously, gets the Champions League final. Jose's, although we, you know, we didn't have the terrible season that season, the cracks start beginning to show, mm. especially with his player relationships. And you know, you sort of see the two teams, two clubs have gone in different directions almost. But I just think there, you can look at it with Oli and go. Do we need to be a little bit more patient? Because mm. we've seen enough with these fantastic runs. He's had two good runs, hasn't he? When Bruno came in and when he first took over as caretaker. Because Oli didn't get the job because of what he did as a player. He got the job because of what he did as a caretaker manager. Mm. That's what forced him to get the permanent job. So there's something there where you think, he's got it in him. And I just think we need to be a little bit patient. I know that's not a popular opinion. I know those people are going to be in the comments going, Jay, you fucking deluded, get Pochettino, you know what you're mm. talking about. But I just do, I just think you give Oli at least to the end of the season and then you can do it again. Also, where's it, where's it gone that we used to, United fans and United used to pride themselves on giving the manager a bit more time, on not being like Chelsea or not being like these teams where you have w one bad season and you get sacked. Like Oli took over a team that was, what was it, seventh and we finished sixth or some, you know, whatever it was, uh, and then he, then last season we finished third. Now this season, we're going into another year with, we've already been PSG and Leipzig. I know that we've been shit in the league and we have been shit in the league. Yeah, there's no doubt that. We, we are currently on the worst home league form since we were relegated in 1973. And we are also on our, the club's best ever away run at the same time. How is that possible? How are those two things possibly happening at the same time? So it's, you think you've got to give him a bit of a, give him yeah. a minute. Yeah, like we finished third last year. Surely he gets the next season yeah. just as a courtesy, not even, not as a courtesy, but you know, you've proven there's something there. We've got to three cup semi-finals and we finished third. Like you, not, you, none of that's see a that great record success. you brought up though? See that record you, where you said Fergie's wasn't as good? Yeah. The thing with Fergie, right? And I vaguely remember this because I was still young, but I vaguely remember it. There was pressure on him. You remember Pete yeah. Molyneux with his flag yeah, and all yeah. that. But what Fergie was doing, and the reason the board and all the board have always said this, we weren't panicking, we weren't critical of him. Mm. He was sort of established, stabilising the club. Yeah. He was getting rid of players that needed to go because they were just, it was part of the drinking culture. He, he tripled the number of scouts. Mm. It was all about the youth. He, he redeveloped the academy. So they could see that as a club, as a whole, he was improving us. And I think there's an element of that with Ollie, Like You can see how he's, he's nurturing some of the youngsters, which Jose just didn't give a toss about. No. Like, he had no interest. Well, he played him as a, as a way to bol bolster his own yeah. CV. Oh, yeah. He? I played, I, you yeah. know, Marcus Rashford came for the academy and Jesse Lingard have played them. What? Yeah. Whereas Oli actually does care about the academy and does care how he handles the players and has handled them really well. Got rid of a lot of players that needed to be moved on. And his signings, by and large, have worked. Yeah. I don't think he signed, I don't think, you know, people may question Maguire, but. If I could go back in time, I'd still buy him. Mm. I think we needed him, and you know we got some. He's improved the defense, hasn't yeah. he? Clearly, Bruno's been a complete success. Wan Bissaka's been a success, you know, and, and some of the other players who it was doubtful, like Martial and Pogba, where we didn't think we we're going to get anything out of him. Even Rashford, people forget yeah. the state of Rashford, not uh, not of him, but the, the the sort of the aura and the personality that was Rashford at the time was this lad who he, he, he wasn't a strike. He was playing up front a lot. He wasn't, a, you know, he didn't quite have a, a poacher's a poacher's eye. Jose's on Sky Sports saying 
look, you know, this lad's been in the squad for three years now. He's a young lad, but he's experienced in this squad and he's not quite got it. Maybe he won't ever have it. After that press conference where he sat there going, now do you see what I mean when I say I ain't got any strikers? After he's just played the match. After Rashford's just played his game, you see what I mean now, dear? Yeah, that was like, a bright and bright and away, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's where, that's where Rashford was when Oli came in. He wasn't the player he is now and the man he is now where everyone loves him around the country. Even non-United fans love him. He's, he got his record goal tally last year. He's started with seven goals and two assists this season. That's not the player that was there then. It's easy to say, well, they already had Rashford. Pogba and Martial look like they're out the door. Rashford looked like he might never be the player you thought he might be. And all of those players have, have turned it around. It's just... The, the idea that it's like, well, they were already there. He's just being backed up by his players. Well, Jose wasn't being backed up by his players no. when, they, when a lot of them were still there. Oh, I, feel, I feel like there's, <laughs> there's a lot to break down. <laughs> yeah. since uh, I mean, the first thing I feel like, the, going back a couple of points, the thing that you said, we always had that pride that we weren't Chelsea, we weren't uh, City, we weren't constantly getting rid of managers. I think that was a bit of a, in a way, a false pride that we had. Yeah. Because I feel like- Came from having Fergie. We, had, we yeah. went from having Fergie, who was like, well, we're never going to sack Fergie. We've had 20 odd years of greatness with Ferguson. And like, we're obviously going to give the manager time because this team's not going to stop winning at like, full stop. It's not going to stop winning the Premier League out of nothing. So I feel like we were like, we'll give the manager some time and then we won't keep sacking him. But I feel like th then it started to show that actually we've had 20 years of winning. Like what we want is mo 20 more years of winning. Yeah. So it instantly became like that. The whole point that fans make is like, oh, we should be better. We should want fans. It's, that is never a thing. But that's the thing. Though. I think at some point you do have to put your money where your mouth is. Exactly. Like yeah. You can't just say it because you've got a good manager. It's like saying, oh, I don't. I can't believe all these people getting new cars all the time because you've got a nice car. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but you need to say that when you get when you get your next car. Yeah. Like, I just, yeah, it, it always annoyed me that that but, whole. We, we pride ourselves on you know, giving a manager a bit more time. And yes, a lot of that did come from the fact that we we could give Fergie some more time because he kept winning every I mean, year. if you look at the sort of sandwich oh, around Fergie, like Atkinson got sacked, what was it, two years after winning, less than two years after winning the FA Cup. Yeah. And then Moyes lasted eight months. Mm. Giggs was given four games. I know he was only caretaker. Two um, wins, two losses. Yeah. Like, yeah. 50% win ratio. Um, yeah. Um, I think it was two wins, two losses. No, it was two it? wins, a draw, and a loss, I think. Oh, was it? Yeah, but it wasn't great. It wasn't like, well, this is the point, though. I'm not saying Giggs would yeah, have had no. a permanent job, um, but, you know, Oli but forced the issue, didn't he, with what he did. Then you had Van Aal, who again wins the FA Cup, gets sacked. Oh, no. Mourinho finishes second within six months, he's gone. I mean, it's, you know, this sort of idea. I get where you're coming from because yeah. I've been, I've been part of you know, we don't sort of our manager at United. Yes, because we've got the most successful manager in history. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that. It's that. But then, but we're then, literally the reigning champions right now. But then we move on to like the the clock numbers, and I think the thing is, is it's like the comparison between those two. I don't think like I feel like it's just a comparison of United fans being petty because it's Liverpool, and I feel like yeah, you can look at the numbers and similars, but what that more shows is if you back a project. And you back a manager for a time because Klopp wasn't Klopp was getting a very similar thing to Solskjaer. He was getting two or three players in. Sometimes it wasn't always the players it wants. It might have been like the second or third target. It was like a situation where he he got players that he liked and players that he wanted, but he was trying to build a team around them at the time, and he was getting a system together. And then it eventually just all came together. But, but Casey, don't you think though, with with Klopp, they had an idea of the manager they wanted was him. They had an idea of the system he played. They were getting players in for him without him even asking. They were way target. They scouted Mo Salah before Klopp even got there, and he ends up with him. It's like they they have yeah. a system like City have with Bergistan, mm -hmm. where they get a manager in, they get a sort of someone who oversees that, and yeah. sort of deals I mean, with the transfers. I'm not, I'm not and they get like, players yeah, in for him. I'm, where I'm not saying like our, that our ownership yeah. structure comparatively is yeah. is nowhere near it. And obviously they have Michael Edwards who just can just pull money out of thin air and I don't know how he does it. I think we're getting better at that though. Yeah, don't but like, our, uh, system, our structure seems but a little I mean, bit like better. In now. terms of getting sales for players, he got like, what was it? 45 million for Jordan, Ivan, Dominic Solanke. Yeah, and 120 million for Coutinho. Coutinho and like he's, he's from Rian Brewster out for 25 million Coutinho. now. Like, player, it's just the sense of like, they get a lot of money, but I feel like it, it shows if you back a project, it helps. And the thing, but the thing is that what it shows, I think is if you back the right project, it helps. Because yeah. they also had, Gerard Houllier there for six years or whatever it was, and they backed him and it didn't win him trophies. Yeah. Like the thing, the, the the what they did well in backing Klopp isn't just backing any manager. It's yeah. 
they knew he was the right manager and they backed him. There's hundreds of teams where that you back them and they just stay shit but it's for not, six but years. I mean, like, like, uh, yeah, I'm not but saying I mean, like, that if we back if we Solskjaer, back, we're not necessarily If we back Solskjaer, win. but then you actually look at what Solskjaer has done. He has one of the best like records against the top teams. I mean, like he's seemingly, he's seemingly doing it backwards in the sense of, oh, we can beat, our, like we've beaten City twice and we beat Chelsea twice and or three times and all that sense, but we can't beat Brighton at home or we can't beat Burnley at home. Well, Klopp had a similar thing, didn't they? They like, seem to be good against the top teams and not so good against the, the rest. The sense is, is like, there's obviously something that Solskjaer is very good at and maybe we need to look at sort of identifying issues. Like I, I've thought for a while that maybe United, what United need is a defensive coach because the fact is, is like obviously we have... Was our, is our defence... I know it's been bad this I mean, season, I mean, but, but like sometimes overall, you see the organisation... I think we only conceded three more goals in Liverpool I mean, like you see, you see the organisation. I mean, maybe it's not a massive thing, but you look at the sort of the personalities on the bench. You have Solskjaer, who is obviously an attacking coach. If you look at Solskjaer's record with players, Rash was improved, Martial's improved. When he was at Mould, he had Haaland, who's now gone on to be this absolutely fantastic superstar But do you not think striking. Lindelof's improved in the soul shot? I mean, Shaw's I mean that, might just be, that might just be my personal opinion, but I, I think, obviously, the last few games, those two defenders have shown something fantastic, like Lindelof and Maguire last two games, and people will say, mm. oh, we lost to Arsenal, oh, we drew with Chelsea, but it wasn't their fault. Like I don't know. If bring, I think bringing the defensive coach in, a undermines the manager. B, I don't mm. necessarily think that is the, the I issue. Mean, I mean, I mean, it, I don't it, think I also think, it, because Ole was a striker, people just assume that he doesn't know how to coach defensively. He's, he's passed the same badges and got the yeah, same true. qualifications as I mean, it, any coach. I, I mean, it, it was, uh, that was more of a thought in the past. I mean, I don't know if it would still be the sense. Now I feel like the defence is actually looking much better. With maybe once we Cam, have Tellers. Don't change your mind. Stick with your goal. I mean, I, I mean, once we had Tellers. Yeah, it's fight about it. But like, Do you know what in, I mean? the sense, in the sense of, you, hey, I have seen cases, especially against like, when we had Tottenham and especially in other sort of senses where I've seen the defence have kind of lost the position and they've mm. lost the shape. There's people who've pushed up too high. There's people who haven't stayed in position. But that might be a case of the players. You never know that. But that's sometimes it's just a case of what you're doing. And I don't know. And what also, the thing. difference is when the defence loses the plot and the defence loses its shape, you concede six goals. When the attack is shit, you, you don't, don't. You just don't, don't score. concede any, and you so you don't go. Up. Oh, he's a he's a terrible attacking coach because look how bad Rashford, yeah. and Bruno, and Mark. Like you could, you know, the the Arsenal game. I thought defensively we were actually quite good. Like mm. we they had two shots on target. Lind, the, the one the this they had the penalty, and the only other real chance they had was a ball played back that Lindelof knocked away. Like they I didn't mean, make many I mean, chances. I mean, I think, I think, we were good I think, against I think Arsenal. personally, was, there was a few more chances in the first half. If Bamiang if he had got a foot on it, would have scored. I think Buakasaka went one over the bar because he was unmarked on a header. Yeah. I mean, like there's a the couple of chances. One, yeah, I give you the, the, head, head, the header one. one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's obviously poor, a couple of issues, like yeah. especially yeah. heading, uh, back post, back post crosses, which yeah, is, we, we do struggle with. But I was saying, like obviously, Solskjaer has his preference to what I feel like he can he improves. I mean, he can improve a whole squad, but obviously, attacking wise, he has definitely shown great improvements. Mm. And United going forward look a lot better than they have in years. Yeah, definitely. So I, there is definitely some positives to backing the Solskjaer project. So well, I think United are as exciting to watch as they have been since Ferguson left. In terms of, we might you we might score four goals in any game. In any in any given game, United could win four 0 and you didn't feel like that under under Mourinho, and you certainly didn't feel like that under Van Gaal. I feel like you had that nil, small nil, nil, moment nil. with Mourinho when he first when, yeah, he, first when he first joined, came in, and we were just back when we were just scoring four goals yeah. in like nah, ten minutes. Nah, that was his, his when we bought Lukaku. That was the second season, wasn't it? But yeah. that was yeah. only for a very that was brief like spell. August. I think we've done. Do you know what I mean? We've scored what was it five goals for the first time since Ferguson left under Solskjaer. We do. We score more goals. We play better football. We score. In the league, we yeah, make right. nice like attacking movement and plays, and we we actually look like a decent team to watch now. When we have it's silly. Like he even, hasn't proved even, that. Even things like hat tricks. Hat yeah. tricks were like. You know, it was Van rare Van as rocking, they, were, they were rare as rocking or shit, and now we've had two in like mm. the last twenty games. Or whatever. I think it was Van Persie and then Ibrahimovic like in the cup, wasn't more it? More individuals, it. but it shows that attack wise, we're doing something mm. right. Martial, best ever season. Rashford, best ever season. Season. Greenwood plays what a third of a season, manages twenty Be goals. Best ever season. Well, it does, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I know, yeah. But so there's something there. I mean. Personally, I just think I agree with what what's mm. more has been said here. I think a, a little bit more time. It's just you have to be realistic, and I think the the problem we've got is now all he's in a position where if he loses for me, if he loses against Everton, he's in deep trouble. You think? Well, let's yeah. talk about and, and suddenly Everton has become a hard game as well. That's like if you look to that, little, that if you run. I mean, if you look to the run at the start of the season. I mean, if you look to 
Like you would have been I like, think Everton have Arsenal, Chelsea, where Everton are. Arsenal, Arsenal, that's Arsenal, right. Arsenal, and Chelsea would be like, oh, that's a bit of a hard one with the two PSG and the Leipzig, and then you would have been like, Everton's the bit of the reprieve, mm. and then we might be able to get uh, some points and sort of. Well, I don't know. We were probably hoping we'd beat Chelsea, but we might be able to get a bit more of an easier game. But Everton are good. Everton are. Very, Everton, they are. But who have they beat this season? They, they drew to Liverpool. Tottenham. They, yeah, Tottenham, Tottenham lose to anyone. Like, I know they, I know Tottenham beat us, but they, they, it's not like they just win every big game they, they play. They drew with Liverpool, which yeah. was um, which was an interesting game. I mean, yeah, but, uh, again, a game they got again, battered in, they got so lucky to draw. Mm, yeah. The goal that was offside and whatever the other one was. They, they're good. They've, they're definitely improved. They've got some good players in there now. They've got a, a, a very good starting eleven and a good manager. But ever, you know, ever to not like drop pick for Real Madrid. Yeah, he did drop. I mean, if you're dropping your goalkeeper. That's not a good. They sign. look. They look good on the opening day. Who was that against Palace? Or it, was a, it was Tottenham. The Spurs. Opening. Was well, it? Again, Spurs. Was, I mean, yes, Everton deserve credit, but Spurs were dreadful. Like yeah, Spurs. Well. Yeah, and then Spurs kicked on into yeah. what they've yeah, become Spurs now, which is just now. an absolute yeah. juggernaut. I just, I just think they've, they've been good and they've been definitely a lot better than we've seen from Everton over the years. But they're not like, I don't know, people acting like they're Barcelona or something. They're decent, but they've got a player who. Anyway, I don't want to. Go, I don't want to slag James Rodriguez off because he's he's a decent player, but he's, he's played about six games in the last five years. And now I mean, no, I, like to be fair, actually, where, where the thing is, <laughs> all right, okay, I'm actually going to defend James Rodriguez. Go James on, Rodriguez has been good wherever he's been for the last five years. What on the bench? No, I mean honestly, every every time he's, he's played, been great on the bench. No, honestly, Preston. every time James, if you look at the like the, the stats, when James Rodriguez plays, he actually puts a lot of thinking. And yeah, but when he plays, in, the that's situation not, is, when, is, uh, is what, what about the stats for when he doesn't play? No, but I mean, like when he was at Bayern Munich on loan, he played really well. When he was at Real Madrid, coming off the bench, he played really well. It was just the fact that he would play with Zidane, who has preferable players, which was Isco, which was yeah. Uh, which but if was he was Modric, that good, was he cost he sixty fit, million. Let's he just forget. didn't fit into the system. Which uh, was what he wanted to play, and he preferred other players. Which is Zidane, you can see Zidane. Like mm. he, they spent fifty million on Luka, Luka Jovic, and he was meant to be this great talent for the Bundesliga, and he still plays Benzema every game, like no matter what. But like, the thing is, yeah, well, like, Benzema is really good. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I mean, there's obviously players he prefers. Like he's I'm so not, I'm not, I'm not being funny, right? I'm not being funny. I just I'm think not, if he I'm, was, I'm sort of like with you a little bit because, and this is gonna, you know, people may get upset about this, but whatever. But if a player of the sort of the talent and the star power of James Rodriguez lived up to that, he wouldn't have ended up at Goodison Park. There is a bit of that. Mm. I'm and sorry. I, I, th I still think it's a good, a good purchase for them. I still think he's a good player. But this whole thing of like, oh, why didn't United sign him? Oh, why he's, he's one of the best attacking midfielders in the world. Well, is he? Because Bay Bayern Munich didn't think so and Real Madrid didn't think so. Not so you know, he's a good you know, player. He's gone to Everton for he's a reason. He's really talented. Great. He's yeah. good, good. Bayern Munich just did that. I went for that phase of they just picked up a load of people on loan and then didn't <laughs> did buy like, them. Perisic like last Douglas year. Douglas Costa, Perisic, James Rodriguez, Coutinho. Like... <laughs> Some of the mixtures of the best attacking talent are like that. Coutinho work, 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 was really good for him. Work, work, work for him, though. They got they, Sané instead. And they all bolts up. Um, should we talk a bit about our midfield rather than slagging off James Rodriguez, <laughs> who I actually quite like as a player, but I'm, no, not, having, I'm not having everyone saying Everton are better edge. than Man United because they've won three <laughs> games. Get over yourselves. Right. Paul Pogba, on the other end. <laughs> about time we spoke about It's about Pogba. time we've never spoke about him for about eight minutes. Here's the thing. He's one of the biggest names in world football. Right. Whenever you look at, you know, even just stuff down to, like, if you go on, um, like, Transfer Market or Soccer Base or one of these websites and you, there's, like, a popular player section, yeah. it's Neymar, Ronaldo, yeah. Messi, whoever, Pogba. James he, Rodriguez. James Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah. he, but he is one of the biggest faces in football. One of the reasons he, he gets the criticism, I think, isn't just because people like to slag him off it's because he gets so much attention because he's one of the most famous biggest names in world football and to be that you have to be one of the best players in world football and uh, I don't think anyone's going to disagree that he's been shocking this season now there have been calls recently and I mean continuously for the last couple of years but certainly it's coming back again now after the comments about him maybe oh Real Madrid are decent they yeah. said about three weeks ago and then following that up with a series of decent performances off the bench and woeful performances when he starts matches. Where are we up to with Paul Pogba? Are we sick of talking about it? But also, we kind of have to talk about it. He does play for Man United. I know that we're sort of sick of the talking point, but he's still not being the player we want him to be. And, he's, and he does play for Man United. He is our record signing. He is, like I said, one of the most famous, marketable, you know, biggest name players in the world. I just, I think it's very, Jay is preparing it's very, to say it's, something. Well, it's very difficult, right, to, to have a nuanced sort of logical argument or discussion about Paul Pogba without people losing their minds because it tends to be, by and large, two camps. 
there's the camp where they hate the sight of him, they want rid of him, they want him to just F off to Madrid or whatever. You know, he doesn't want to be a lardy down and all the rest of it. And then there's the other Paul Pogba FC where he's the greatest midfielder in the history of association football. And, you know, Brian Robson isn't, wasn't fit to lace his boots and all this other nonsense. And I think it's, some, it's somewhere in between. Like, he is a very talented player. He is probably, you know, one of our best players. But I think in some people's minds, he's elevated to like, oh, he's better than De Bruyne type levels. And I mm. don't think he is that. I don't think he's at all. And I think the, if you look over his sort of time at United, He's had spells where he's been very good, but they've been sort of mixed with inconsistent spells. I don't think that's anything, you know, insightful or revelatory, saying he's been very inconsistent. And I think that's always been an issue with him. And I think it works with Paul Pogba when you're not just relying on Paul Pogba, when you've got someone like a Bruno who can come up and deliver. Because when you start relying on Paul Pogba, that's when you start falling down. Because for me, he just, he isn't that, he isn't, maybe, you know, I'll get a little stick for it, maybe he isn't, as great as we all think he is, where he can be like that one-man midfield. Jay, I've just thought of something. I don't know if I should say this. Go on. When you're talking about how brilliant he can be, but he's inconsistent and, and it's been years now, is Paul Pogba just this central midfield nanny? <laughs> <laughs> like you say, are we the baddies? <laughs> all, the, all the talent in the world, yeah. on his day, is one of the best players yeah. in the world. You can see it. You can see like he's got all these the traits. From distance and yeah. But, he, but it, we've, it's been five years now and Maybe he can't like, keep it and, together and for you know a full what? season. In my mind, that wouldn't be like a bad analogy because I quite like, I love Nanny. I did. I really like Nanny. I, for great, me, the Nanny but... show was worth it. Like, it was worth it. For, for all the, of course well, it was, man. Nanny, it was. Oh, it was. No, but the fact like, was, is when oh, Nanny was... Pop, but, Nanny, but, but, do you know, <laughs> like, listen to me. Listen, do you know why that, that kind of works as well? said it. Because was it 2000 and... 10, 2011, Nanny was our player of the season mm. based on like 20 amazing games. You, many people would argue Paul Pogba a couple of seasons ago was our best player yeah. based on about 20 amazing games. There's been a lot of inconsistency. You've There's times where if you put his highlight world. reel together, if you put his highlight reel together, it looks amazing. What if you spread done? that out over five years, there's times when you're What have I done, Jay? I I, I said think, I think, agreed I with it. You can't pull there. it back. I, I think there's an argument um, there. But anyone that wants to start piling on, that's not necessarily an insult because Nanny was a. I feel. Ace. I feel like the thing with Paul Pogba is, and and this isn't. It, it, it's not in the traditional sense of what I'm about to say. Is it easy? He's not in the traditional sense of what I'm about. What to I'm about say. to say? Is, say it then. Is, 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 <laughs> he's, no, no, no. He's, he's a player. He, what is the traditional sense of what you? He's say? a player that doesn't thrive under pressure in the sense of. Let, let me just finish off the point. When I say that is like what it usually it means is you don't turn up to the big games, but I feel like he doesn't play well when it's all on him. Mm. Like if you saw the game against Arsenal and we saw he made loads, like that was, if take that for example, no one in that midfield was playing well. And the fact is everyone just kept giving it to Pogba and was like, do something like knock it over the top to Rashford. He'll get in inside because you're the, one of the only ones who could probably make this pass because Bruno's, having to come too deep and he's he's more in about knocking it inside and into play and little short passes underneath the defender. It's like, knock it over to Rashford, go on, do it. And he's like, eh. and like kind of like, like got, like, got, uh, got pressed by party. Is it, is it but like, like, but then also overall. the fact is, is that as soon as a player, as soon as a team notices that, and especially like t a team that was set up like Arsenal with two really pressing, high pressing midfielders, they just started pressing him and party just kept going onto him and onto him and taking it off him. And it was like, well, that you can't do much. But then you it goes into your point where you said, well, when Fernandez plays really well, Pogba plays really well. But I feel like that's because when he knows he has players around him, it gives him confidence. Like the thing is, like that four, that two, that three. No, I mean, we have the exceptions of the three-two against City, but Sanchez, some for some reason in that game, just decided to turn up, and the ball over the top to Pogba for his second goal was fantastic and out, absolutely out of nowhere for what Sanchez was doing at the time. But I feel like he's a player that needs other players around him. And it goes back to the Juventus days. If you look at it, that was a com we were talking about it before we came on air. That's completely exceptional midfield who took the pressure off him massively because it was like, oh, it, it doesn't matter. If you, you're getting pressed too hard, just give it to Pirlo and Pirlo will get it to anyone on the pitch. Or it's like, or if you lose the ball, don't matter. Marchisio will come out of nowhere and tackle him. And, it, and literally, you can just be Pogba and be free and don't have to worry about having to be relied on. But, and that's literally what I just said. That's of, the same thing. Yeah. A couple of things were, though with that. You took a lot longer to say it. <laughs> first of all, right, Jay? This uh, <laughs> first I don't of all, know. First of all, Serie A. Even then, I mean, I think it's a better league now than it was when Pogba was there. And even you know, it's not that great. When's the last time a, a team from Italy? He's like the Serie A master. He'll tell you everything. When's this the last guy time a team from Italy won the Champions time, League? Is it 2007? More about Serie A no, 2010 Inter Milan. Inter Milan. And even and that team was like. 
standout team in the league that year because Jose was there. It was the treble winning team. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, you know, Italy isn't the league it once was. A player like Paul Pogba gets a bit more time in midfield in that league. And like you said, he well, had his, at, these great players around him. But also, Pirlo was like 34 then. This wasn't Pirlo at Little his prime. Like, this was Pirlo who no, 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 was no, on no, his no, second. No, 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 no. Two years no, later, no, he was playing in, in no, no, America. Pirlo, Pirlo's prime was that. No. Everyone, AC Milan got rid of Pirlo saying, ah, he's past yes, it. He, and he yes, he and he was past it. The only reason he looked good in the only reason he looked good in Juventus is because he was in the best team in the league. If he'd have gone to Brescia or Atalanta instead of going to Juventus, everyone would say, Pirlo was past it. If Pirlo had gone from AC Milan at 32, whatever it was, and he'd have come to Man United, he would not have had that second wind, that second wave of fame of look at his great beard that Pirlo had. Pirlo was at his best in about 2006. He, he has potentially looked 50 for about like... He has. And I like Pirlo, years. and he did have this great sort of renaissance second wind, but he was at AC Milan for a long time. One of those players was like, he'll retire at AC Milan. He left and went to Juventus and looked great again because he was playing in the best team in the league. And I think the same with Paul Pogba. He looked great because he was playing in the best team in the league and he's got so many good qualities. He can bring the ball out, he can shoot, he can make any pass on the pitch. He's, he's, he, you know, he's got a great engine, he, he can do all these things. He can tackle a bit as well for someone who's so good going forward. All these things that you don't expect. He can hold men off, his dribbling's then, exceptional that, that for that his makes size. Point, like, all of these play well. Like, obviously you say that the France, mid, the France midfield, he got the man of match performance in the final. Yeah. You've got Kante and then you've... Um, I think you've also got like Corinthians, so it's always highly rated by, and like loads of other different players coming in, and they were like, "Oh, but it was still a great France midfield." And then obviously in front of him, he had some great forwards. But I think I think Pogba's been great a lot for United. I don't think uh, this whole thing of, you know, he's been shit. I just don't think it's true. I think I do agree that he's not done it consistently, which there's no denying that. No, no I don't think that's like point. a big that's massive statement, anything. is it? That's what I was saying no, earlier. The whole thing that he's been crap the whole time, I don't I don't agree with. Not that either of you two have said that, but that is a, a theme that you see. This when is what I mean, it's polarizing things. It's like yeah. he's either Darren Gibson's not quite you know, lesser brother yeah. or he's fucking the, well, the feel best like that's midfielder since, uh, since oh, he's better than Roy Keane. But that, yeah. Do you know goes, what I mean? There's no what there's you no say. there's no in between. It's there's like no point where you can just say, Do you know what? He is a very talented mm. player. He is capable of winning you a game. He doesn't do it often enough. Maybe that's because, partly that's because he hasn't had the players around him that he should have done. And partly that's because he hasn't lived up to the expectations at times. I think that's where we are. But when you start trying to talk like that, people just lose their minds and the they don't want to have that. The best thing sliced Fred in midfield. <laughs> oh my God, Cheers, boys. Um, really so what are you thinking the then with Pogba? What, do, why do we have to do this all the time? Isn't, isn't this conversation itself, isn't the fact that it's always this round and round and round for me, and, and I know we're perpetuating this, but we are sort of trying to comment on what's going on, but that's, well, that's silly, all everyone's doing. It'd be silly doing. to ignore that's it. That's all everyone's, everyone's doing. talking about it. So it's a bit pot calling the, the kettle black. recording, you know, yeah. in the press conference, Ollie's addressed Pogba's yeah. uh, giving away the penalty, probably giving away the penalty, sorry, against Arsenal, so it is relevant. It's yeah. not just like yeah. we just decided randomly to start talking about Pogba. No. Um, but even again, again, you feel like you have to issue this. But, but isn't the, isn't this conversation in and of itself for me is is my least favorite part of Paul Pogba being at United? Isn't his performances because I think he's had a lot more good ones than he has had bad ones, despite what people say. My least favorite part of Paul Pogba is having to have this conversation Constantly, every three yeah. months. The thing is, is though, is that it, it, it again, it's United fans of. A, a, uh, cycles of United fans. It's either like it's either Oli in or Oli out. It's never like it's like at the moment it'll be Donny Van der Beek in. If he has a couple of bad games, it'll be Donny Van der Beek out. It's Pogba at the moment. It's Pogba out. Pogba back in. Like it's a, it's a sense of they play badly. We want them dropped. We don't play well with them in the team. We want them back in. It's a weird system of just constantly. Are you smirking at? Uh, I can see the thumbnail for this video being made. Is, is it something and it to says do nanny? the midfield nanny with a picture of Paul Pogba on <laughs> That's it. great. That is a great thought. That is a great and that will comment. generate debate. But and I would take self off social media for a few weeks. <laughs> I would I'm go into hiding. Mate, Joe. And I'm go and about find it. the nearest yeah. cave that you I can find in the it. centre of I don't, I don't think that, but that's what you, I felt like you were describing. Make sure you clip Jay. up that bit, yeah, of him saying <laughs> when he realises when the penny The good thing is, if he if he's amazing and it makes me look like an idiot, great. I like Nanny. I I, first of all, Nanny was good. Second of all, I wasn't saying he was that. You were just describing a player that's incredibly talented, all the talent in the world, on his day is one of the best in his position, but has been inconsistent for five years. And that's what Nanny was. But do you I, know do think, I think I'd Paul Pogba's a better player I'd than Nanny. I do realise. I'd say one thing. If no. you put, quote, Joe Smith on that thumbnail, <laughs> I can hear what you're saying off camera. <laughs> yeah. I'll quit. Look at even Dave's getting and in there. quit, I mean, pretty, and even he's I also realised that while yeah, I was doing the like, sacked. Ollie yeah. in, Ollie out, I was doing wax on, wax off. So yeah, all the exactly. motion on the table. Um, but yeah, it's 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 just how United fans seem to be at the moment. It's like Pogba was bought for 80 million. Um, 
You expect him to live up to that. And if he's, any, if he's nowhere near close, we want him out of the team. We want him out of the team completely or we want him benched and we want a different player put in, which I, is Johnny I, Van der Beek is I, now I, with I 40 million. I don't agree with that. I don't think you're saying it's in cycles. I don't think it is now. I think there's camps and I think it's you're literally either in the pop brain or the pop route camp for most of our fan base. I've seen it and it's like, I've seen so much attention on Pogba, probably more than I've ever seen on a United player, genuinely. I, feel, I think Rooney was close. Rooney and Ronaldo were close, but in terms of, I've never seen this sort of trait almost of some fans who are more Paul Pogba than they are United and some mm. fans who, no matter what he does, don't forgive I him. Don't forgive him, let me finish. Don't forgive him because he flirted with City. He flirted with City, people Get don't owned. forgive him with that. Pep, said, Pep came out and said he was offered to us by Riola and I know a lot of fans who just, that was it, they were done with him because he never denied it. They don't forgive him because he said he wanted a new challenge and they felt he should have been part of the new challenge, should have been with us and getting us back to where we belong. And they don't forgive him when he, what was it you said he said? Uh, yeah, yeah, Madrid, Madrid. These, Do you know, right, decent. people, I like, they know some people who just sort of dismiss those comments and say, oh, he was asked about it. If, if you were on a night out yeah. and, you're being f- and you were being filmed and you knew you were being filmed yeah. and, someone, and someone was talking to you and they went, oh, there's a girl over there, she's really pretty, isn't she? And you're like, you know what, one day maybe it would be nice to, to sleep with that girl. Do you think that your girlfriend would be happy with that? If I what said would that, you, what would she say? If it's I, like, oh, you know, in the future, maybe it's time for a new challenge. You know, what, your wife. <laughs> a new challenge. You know your wife's at home, like, what do you mean a new challenge? <laughs> what's, what's challenging about this? <laughs> just the like, fact that's that what we are. We're just upset wives. Paul, <laughs> just there the is fact, no new just challenge. the fact that I've been on a night out and there was a girl nearby yeah, would be enough exactly. for me to be sleeping yeah. on the couch that, for the rest of the life. Why are you even asking the question? Yeah, but what sort of girl was it? That's like, yeah, exactly uh, Spanish. Spanish. <laughs> Exactly. Metropolitan. <laughs> I know, but I just think like, Why come don't on. You fuck off and live a It's then. fair enough that people get a bit wound up at that, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course well, it is. Uh, Jay, um, would you ever see that lady over there on the dance floor? Would you ever consider <laughs> leaving your current girlfriend and, and making her your girlfriend? I'm not even looking at that girl. I've only got eyes for my wife. Perfect. <laughs> and it's as easy only as have, that. You'll have one year contract left thing. with your current. <laughs> and here's the actual thing: you can st- say that and still go over to her. That's the thing, Paul. Just because you say, "No, nah, I don't want to go to Real Madrid," just text us and sit down saying I was lying. You can still leave. <laughs> at least make us feel good publicly. <laughs> For God's sake, cheat on us if you have to, but don't say it in the eyes of the, of the, of the media. <laughs> do, do, displaying your disloyalty all over the, the front pages. It's, it's, it's you know, so yeah. sad. You know what you remind me of? Play with me, my emotions, you man. You remind me of David Brent when he, he finds out he's being called Mr. Toad. And he said, why not start with him? At least start with him. Yeah. <laughs> Look Look at him. Me now. I feel like for some United fans as well, it's like, it's, it's the sort of... the. the the thing that the carrot on the stick that's been dangled in the face is like you can mm. still get 60 or 70 million for him it's like yeah, you paid exactly. 80 and here's 60 or 70 million and everyone's like well that's a good deal that's it's like nice. we don't like him and we don't think he's any good but we could get 70 million back and play that I think, pay for someone else I think else. one thing's for certain and I'll say this right, I don't want him to leave I, th- I think he's con- inconsistent mm. and I think I want to see more from him but I don't want him going anywhere uh, two reasons one I think like we see, we've seen enough from him and you know, with Bruno especially, to show what he can do and he, he is on his day, one of the most effective midfielders in the world. And secondly, I have absolutely zero confidence in his board mm. to use that money reinvestment in the squad. That'll yeah. go to buying, you know, Joel Glazer a new fucking yacht. That's another thing, another a good point there. Like just because we sell him doesn't mean we're going to bring in someone better. No, it means that sure. we've brought in sixty million, yeah, or of course, a hundred million, or whatever it may well, be. So I was like, oh, so Eduardo Camavinga, the next Pogba, is worth sixty million. Well, uh, have you heard of this guy from the Championship who's worth twenty? <laughs> yeah, or well, or Jude Bellingham who's from the Championship and is worth Um Let's talk a little bit about Roy Keane because he's been upset. Do you know Roy Keane gets upset? Told me to have fuck off once when I was a kid. <laughs> So, and this is the man. This is the t- sort of character we're I talking it, about. <laughs> it was great. We're not yeah. showing passion in the fight. Yeah, yeah, me and mates did, made the mistake of in Altrincham asking him for his autograph, him and Lee Sharp. Mm. We're only 14. Lee Sharp signed, I remember he signed my ticket stub, I remember it was from the West Ham game the night before, and Roy Keane told us all to fuck off. Good. Would you like him if he'd have just done a big slide tackle on you? I, I <laughs> preferred he told us to fuck off and then punched us, but I was happy with that. Um, yeah. He said, on, he's he's talking doing? about Thomas Party, obviously, someone who United were linked with a little bit in the summer, someone who was saying that we actually need more than maybe a Matic or a Pogba type player in that midfield holding area. He was talking about Party after the Arsenal game. He said, the more I look at him, the more I miss, the more I miss. The more I wish, he was in United's midfield. Big, strong, aggressive. He likes to pass it forward. He looks comfortable on the ball. Uh, I think this kid has a chance to match. Uh, what Patrick Vieira used to do. He also said that this United team is nowhere near good enough. He said, I don't see any leaders out there. There's a real worry for United now. Now, we've already talked about Solskjaer and the manager and all that kind of stuff, but talking specifically about the players, I'm not necessarily certain I buy into this whole no leaders out there because 
Like, not every team is full of, like, well, first of all, I think someone like Bruno is a leader on the pitch. Yeah. I think, you know, Harry Maguire, who isn't necessarily the most vocal, but he, he, he came into the defence and we conceded 30 less goals than the season before, despite playing more games. Now, whether that's, it makes him a leader in the traditional sense of barking orders and all that, he certainly led that defence. He was certainly the talisman of that defence, a, a defence which was much improved on the season before. I, I, I'm not, I think Marcus Rashford's a leader. I think there's a lot of, or, or certainly off the pitch, he it shows how every human, let alone footballer, should conduct themselves. I don't necessarily think you're going to have a Roy Keane-style leader or uh, you know a, a Rio Ferdinand-style leader. It's hard to have yeah. leaders in the way Roy Keane likes when you, your team isn't full uh, of world-class players. Yeah, didn't he even oh. have a go though? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, right, didn't yeah. he have a go at Marcus? He said, "Oh, he was just shrugging his shoulders." Which things are nonsense. Marcus Rashford cares about United probably as much as, if not more, than most United fans. He's an absolutely yeah. diehard red. Probably as much as Roy Keane. Yeah. yeah, and the idea that, and he said, you know, he had a go at Marcus for shrugging his shoulders at one point, which I don't think you can argue that Marcus is sort of apathetic towards mm. the, the defeat. He had a go at Cavani for the way he's warming up. I mean, I love Keane, I do, and I get some of what he's saying, but I think sometimes it goes to the point where you're like. It's your You're uncle, just it's your drunk uncle screaming sake. at the moon. Do you know what I mean? Like what, oh, it, drunk old moon scream. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, he's there. He's don't get like, invited to family barbecues it, anymore. There is an element of that, and I think you know. You mentioned that you don't all need a Roy Keane, and I don't think we've had a Roy Keane since he left. To be honest with you, that type of, of leader. But you can have players that care. You can have players that speak to the teammates. Fred is very vocal if you watch him on the on the pitch. He actually is. Bruno obviously cares. I mean, Marcus on. cares. Do you know what I mean? And even like Harry Maguire, who's been absolutely hammered this season, if you look, watch him, he's mm. not quiet. He's yeah. one who does organise the defence. I just think that it's sort of an easy or an obvious criticism to level at United. And I think any time any team loses, you can say there weren't any leaders on the pitch. Because in theory, what a leader does, when you when you think of the term leader, you think of you know Napoleon or you think of it's it comes from this sort of grandiose status rather than I like the how word you grandiose leader. status and went Napoleon <laughs> as short yeah, as no he wasn't the, short he was actually above average height for you the think time. of the 18th Getting century right. French leader naturally look naturally. up Napoleon's height and look up the average height of French people at the time he wasn't that short second of all <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is the term leader is, a, is a, a, a word to describe people who take charge of things and who go into battle and all that sort of stuff. So I think any time a team loses, you can say there were no leaders because, you know, a real leader wins. Yeah. That's what a leader does. It, they win you the game. But a leader can't win every time when, you, when you're playing football. Yeah. I, I think the team has, for me, is much more likeable, has more obvious leaders, like we said, the likes of Rashford, who again isn't necessarily marshalling people and leading from the front or all that sort of stuff, but he's a great example off the pitch. He's gr he's a brilliant player on the pitch. Bruno clearly is what I would describe as even a, a traditional style leader, shouting orders, getting furious when we lose, scoring all the goals, assisting all the goals. I think we do have leaders, but when you lose, everyone looks like they don't have a leader because if there was if they were a true leader, they would have won you the game or the battle or whatever it may be. I just think. When any when any team loses, you can say there weren't any leaders out there because if if there were, they would have won. But I just I think sometimes it's a bit of an easy an easy uh, assault on the team. Well, the well the constant argument and the stick that they used to beat with it is that like there is we gave the captaincy to Maguire after he just joined last mm -hmm. season, and that was the sort of thing. It's like oh, if there's any leaders in the team, why have we not giving it to them? Why have we given it to someone who's only just come in? Like sort of that situation. And like I see people say like oh. Why is it wasn't it given to like, the longest standard player, which would probably, I think it's De Gea. And then Phil Jones. Phil Jones. <laughs> I forgot existed. I don't even know if he is the, the, the same. He was born in the same. Uh, it, Phil Jones, well, Chris Mullins obviously gone now, but Phil Jones probably. Well, like of people who actually play football. Um, De Gea. Again, why does anyone want a captain to be a goalkeeper? I Especially never a goalkeeper who at the time it. was wildly in and out of form. Yeah, and, and I just never understand it because if you see Tottenham as Hugo Lloris as the captain, he had to nominate someone on the pitch to do all his talking for him because yeah. he never was anywhere near it. It's like if anyone wanted... It was a problem up the field on the ref. It was Vertonghen who went up the pitch. Yeah. Vertonghen basically acted as the captain on the field. And the fact is, is there's only half of the pitch you can actually shout to. You can't go and tell like Marcus no. to get book his ideas up when Marcus is running down the wing over there and he's like yelling. 75 yards like, away. 75 yards away. Like, yeah. And then if you go to the next longest day, it's like, I think it's Luke Shaw. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which we, we, again... We, we, I don't think it's a team that's full of leaders. I'm not trying to say that yeah. we've got but Rio, I feel like we've got Skulls and, and, and yeah. Keane and these type of players in there. 
But I do think that it's, it's an easy care. insult, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And and also the whole captain's armband thing. Uh, Bru- it, people were saying that Bruno should be the captain, future captain. Any, anytime anyone shouts at another player, you see all over Twitter, future captain. You're like, not everyone can be a future captain. It's like, br- at the time, Rashford didn't even really seem like he would be a choice at the time. I think things have changed a lot. Even my choice. Ma- maybe yeah, now, yeah. but I, I don't think it... Maybe time, I'm, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying what you thought at the time, but I think the yeah. general consensus at the time was Rashford was too young, and even then he wasn't getting the same sort of goals that he... This is the start of last season, or whenever it was, January. Um, I just think that, you know, it's it's not... It's not an easy an easy role to do I for mean, anyone. And, and to, Maguire was the standout candidate to, to, at the time. To play slide devil's advocate, I get what Keno's saying. Oh, yeah, and, me and too. there is there is an element. I know where you where you say you know if we were winning, you wouldn't be having this argument. And the point is, we keep losing. And he's saying the reason you're losing is because yeah. you're not having anyone there who is showing that leadership that you need on the pitch. And there is an element of that. I think any United fan who's watched United would be like. Come on, lads. We need to see. It's not just about passion, but you need to see a bit more at times. Yeah, I do, and I you agree know, with and that. I get that, especially when it comes to sort of stamping your authority on the game, where we've seen our midfield quite recently getting overrun or whatever. But it's more than that. And it isn't just mm. there's the lack of leaders. That's an easy argument, and it's not. It's you know tactically, we've we've just you know not been no. good enough, and that's always that's always got to look at his responsibilities there mm. and individual errors. That's not leadership. That's just. Yeah. Poor, mm. big, but the, the thing is, the thing is with leadership and the captaincy argument. Just going back to that, when people say, "Oh, the guy shouting at someone," or oh, future, like you said, future captain and stuff. The, the captaincy has completely changed from probably when uh, Roy Keane was there. Like, the thing is, is that you can have leaders in the dressing room that aren't the captain. Like, the thing is, is that everyone in the dressing room will have a voice and say something. It's like someone who screams at someone every twenty minutes is probably not a very good captain mm-hmm. because the captain has to go up to the referee. He has to be very level headed. Could you imagine Roy Keane talking to a ref nowadays? He'd probably make them all cry and then they send him off. Yeah. Like, well, it, would like you, would you say, like, it was Arsenal's captain, Aubameyang, is he a leader? And they won. No. No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Not really. Exactly, but the fact is, it's just like, you need a group of players in the dressing room. Like, Harry, Harry Maguire probably makes sense because he seems to be that someone who's quite vocal in general mm-hmm. sense, but everyone seems to respect him and he seems to just get out his way and he knows how to deal with people. That's the sort of sense of why I think he's And also, the, he plays every match, he's available all the yeah, time. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think that's why he's the captain. That's the sense of it. But yeah. then, you, you, if you have people like Fernandez, they obviously care, and it's just the sense of they just need to learn to work together. Because the, the situation on against Arsenal was there was just a lot of problems, and the midfield just didn't work together. And it was just a, like, just a bit of a positional sense mm. and stuff like that. And I said this at the time it was just all four players in that midfield played badly. Mm at the same time and that doesn't happen very you often you can go with, like you can talk about any of our defeats this season you know against Spurs all the defence played badly at the same time you know against Palace the entire 11 played badly at the same time I don't think it's just you know there is an element of leadership but that's not the be all and end all no. there's a lot more than that like, there is I right. didn't see us make a six yard pass for 20 minutes in like yeah we didn't need to make six yeah we did I saw oh, sorry, I Harry Maguire make... to pass it six I, yards sorry, to David De Gea a few make, times I didn't say us make, uh, make more than three six yard passes put together yeah no six yard forward passes no was, they were <laughs> as soon as you tried to go was... forward it went straight to them midfield and I was like oh, we God, made loads okay. of them anyway right I think that's enough from us Wally, getting worked well, up Wally of the week week Wally of the week then who have you got go on then you always like you always try and pick one of ours. You pick yeah, one for once. You Jim. go first. I'm, am I allowed to be political? Yeah. Um. Simon Mayo, <laughs> DJ, <laughs> and pioneer. I'm gonna go with Nigel Farage. Oh, he's nice. posting videos again. He's he's like you know he's, he's like you, 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 drunkle. You, you drunk you drunkle who's gone out drunkle moon somehow shout. managed to get a flight to America and he's now wandering the streets of America <laughs> making videos. And you're like, how's he got there? Mm. Who's let him out? Yeah, just embarrassing Britain. So Farage, I can't stand him. And if I can have two, I'll have Tommy Robinson for getting nicks and crying as well. I just don't like far right people. Go on, Joe. <laughs> no, you go, you go next. Uh, Farage. Um, Tommy Robinson. <laughs> you could have had them any week for the last Yeah, and I will, years. if you let me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, I don't know. Tra- uh, maybe tr- Troy Deeney for oh. being exactly Ooh. what I expected him to be on Talksport, which oh, was very good. Which is like he made he made a fun of Maguire, and he was like, "Oh, Maguire's terrible." He actually he actually made Neil Custis sound reasonable, yeah. which is wow. which is always a bad it's thing. Sad that isn't it? Because Deeney for a long time had this like th- his his f- like character was. He's not. He's not this media trained sort of football. You know, same thing over and over again. He talks well. He's he's articulate. He talks about his family. He brings things in nicely. And then he's, he's writing for the Sun, and now he just seems a bit like yeah. Super he's right. he's you, hyperbole. You, he was like in, uh, like you say a play that you, you could easily like. Yeah. You know, he'd been he'd been in prison. He admitted that, and he was like, you know, he's come out, reformed himself. Mm. 
love all that stuff. And then, you know, I'm, I'm working for the sun. I'm, all, on, yeah, talk, I'm on Talk Sport spouting just clickbait drivel. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's like oh, I work for Watford, I work for the fans. And like I said, everyone knows me. I have my own bar, all the fans get to know me and that sort mm. of stuff. And he was like, yeah, it's like, oh, Maguire's terrible. It's like, why? He's like, he's always been terrible for the last three years. It's like, yeah, well, yeah that's, the best well, that's, that's why you get eight million the best defense transfers. Last year. And he was like, yeah, but look at Ben's this match. And he was like, it's like, it's not his fault. He's actually defended quite well. These games. It's like, and then he took his headphones off and stopped the interview and just like, was like, ah, oh, no, I'm not doing it. I'm like, like, this is not why you should be have any platform like to do anything. Uh, my wall of the week is Nanny for making me say what I said before. <laughs> and actually you, you, you made yourself you say You and that. Nanny you said for it. making me think it was even remotely suitable to say that, to compare Paul Pogba to Nanny. And I can see the thumbnail. It's still being made in the background. <laughs> and I'm furious. Can you see the cogs in my head about how I'm going to clip this up and yeah. post it it's on gonna, social media? Is it just media? a picture of Joe Smith's head? And then it's just like transparent. <laughs> Idiot, like, like, question mark. No, no, no. But instead of like, <laughs> instead of like in a Simpsons movie where it's Homer Simpson with a clapping monkey, it's just Nanny doing a flip. Yeah. Great. Right, that's going to be all from us uh, today. <laughs> Let us know your Wally the Week at home. I know it's me. I know I should have <laughs> said that. I know Pogba's better than Nanny. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Can we cut it out? No, no it's been not sort a of, It's been sort of peppered and yeah, sort of no interwoven way it's getting cut out for now. the last 30 it's minutes. It's, it's in. Right, it's, it's in. Ingrained. I'm it. It's ingrained. If it's you like that Japanese knot route that you get in those yeah. housing videos that Dean Dublin does. It's like you can't get it out once it's in. Oh, God. Right, that's going to be all from us. Thank you very much for joining us for the Devil's Podcast. I'm Joe. That's Jay. That's Casey. See you later.